We get stuck behind a guy in a freaking earth rover. The first mini triple digit fuel ups. I feel like we do this a lot. You can chew up a KM3 pretty bad. But my nipples are about to come through this shirt. Flew my drone into the side of that mountain. They've even got a dang dam. You want a piece of this? Step up, fool. Well, it's day one. I left an hour late, but uh, hit a buzzard about five minutes into the trip. So that, I guess he thought he was gonna duck under the excursion. And they'll never make that mistake again. Anywho, we gotta get some fuel and the burrito at the Bucky's up here and uh, I'm gonna head north, pick up a couple buddies in North Alabama and then continue heading west. Folks, Bucky's is not just a gas station. It's a destination. All right, the first of many triple digit fuel ups. Even though the price of fuel is pretty good here, it still takes over a hundred bucks. You can look at the video from last year and figure out how much we spent for fuel in this area. It's probably at least a dollar more per gallon. And I got a beast burrito and chocolate milk. Ah, everything a growing boy needs. All right, it's day two, Monday. Just leaving the Fairfield here in Weatherford, Oklahoma. Excursion's doing great, 12 miles per gallon, as always. Heading towards Durango, gonna stay there tonight, get a good meal, good night's sleep, shower, and tomorrow morning we'll hit the mountains. Still full of oil? Everything still looks good under here. Just fire it off and let it warm up. State bird of Texas, wind turbine. The New Mexico side was so weak that I didn't even film it and it snuck up on me and I missed it. But we're in New Mexico. Mountain time. Elk road kill, that's a, that's a first. So riding around the excursion, and pretty much everywhere we go, we got the biggest overland vehicle. There he is. Then there's this guy. We get stuck behind a guy in a freaking earth rover. First we'll stop on our trip. It's a great sand dunes national park in southeast Colorado. It's a gigantic dune. You can rent a sand board outside the park and you can board down the dunes. I didn't do that. Out of shape and I would have had a stroke. So we came, we saw, now we need to go find somewhere to sleep. All right, it's day three. It's really day one because today's the first day we hit the trails. We're leaving Durango. We've got about an hour drive to Silverton. We're gonna stop, get some beer, some lunch. We're gonna hit the trails. We've got the ginger fueling the excursion. I feel like we do this a lot. It's pretty much a road tractor. It gets 12 miles per gallon no matter how fast or slow you go. Got a car wash right here. I think it might be a good opportunity to blow all the bugs off the front of the truck. No more bugs. Finally made it to Silverton. Beautiful little mountain town. Train in the background. We hit up Avalanche Brewing. Got some beers, got some lunch. I got the ginger airing down the tire because the trail start right at the end of Main Street. Well, we're about 10 miles out of Silverton. And I can't breathe. The truck can't breathe. So we're gonna put it in low range, use the gearing instead of the horsepower. The ride's a little rougher than we wanted. So we're gonna go to 22 in the front, 26 in the back, give that a try. I can't really remember what we did last year. I'm old and out of shape and I'm out of breath at 10,000 feet, just like my truck. Turns out you can buy supplemental oxygen out here at Walmart. Slightly less out of shape. We did all the Colorado trails last year in two wheel drive. We did use the locker sun, but we never used four wheel drive because we wanted to prove a point and we did. We proved that with enough weight and enough torque, you can chew up a KM3 pretty bad. So this year we decided to use four wheel drive just to save the tires a little bit. So. This is like County Road 110 or something out of Silverton, 12,600 feet. Pretty sure I got hypoxia. All right, we made it to Hurricane Pass, the hurricane, depending on where you're from. 12,700 feet, there's a lake right there. It's cold and windy, but my nipples are about to come through this shirt. You're welcome. When you do these trails, you want to stop in front of the signs to get a picture to prove you've accomplished something in life. Don't be the guy that parks his rig in front of the sign, takes a picture, and then walks away. That makes you because nobody else can park in front of the sign to take a picture. Take your picture, and get your rig out of the way. California Pass, 
still can't breathe. I'm at a cool meal on a cool trail, either of which I remember the name of. I'll figure it out in a minute. But this is part of the reason I love coming up here, these old structures. This thing's gotta be at least 60 feet tall. Huge timbers. There used to be a steam engine right here. I don't know where the boiler was, but there was a pulley down that shaft that would have driven off the steam engine and powered equipment downstairs. There's huge hoppers still intact everywhere. Just really, really cool. We're almost upstairs. There's an elevator shaft right there. You see the pulley wheel at the top. It would have been steam powered. Probably. This is a Frisco mill on the California Gulch Trail. It's built in 1903. Really cool spot to stop and explore. See the old construction and machinery in there. There's a friendly little chipmunk squirrel thing. Look how fat his cheeks are. He's got those things full, full of treats. I didn't feed him. Somebody's been feeding him though. He's a heifer. We just started up Engineer Pass. We're doing it the reverse of what we did last year. We're gonna go over the pass and go down below the tree line and find a place to camp. Last year we camped at like 12,000 feet and we all woke up with alcohol. A altitude sickness. Altitude sickness, sorry, I hope you didn't see that, Mom. But uh, yeah, going up and over. And then we're gonna camp. In reverse. And we're gonna eat steak. Yeah, in reverse. Not reverse in the truck, but like the reverse direction. It's not the same thing. What's the air feel like at 12,850 feet? Thin. I can't catch my breath. Oh, mountain beaver over here. Yeah, here, here. Mountain beavers. He's wondering what an excursion is doing up here. We stopped at Odom Point. It's a little offshoot from the Engineer Pass Trail. Engineer Pass is right over there. Last year I flew my drone into the side of that mountain. There was beer involved, but I was droning, not driving, so chill out. And we did find it. All right, we have made it to Engineer Pass. It's nearly 13,000 feet and it is cold up here. Very windy. We got us a really good campsite just a little bit down from Engineer Pass. It's about 11,200 feet, which is a little bit higher than we want to be, but it's a pretty cool spot. Got tons of firewood out here and a legit waterfall. It might be hard waking up in the morning. Got the excursion set up over here. They got the gingers over there making the steaks. We got the fire going. And we've got actual waterfall behind the truck. So we don't need the white noise machines tonight. We got nature's white noise. And some pretty ominous bear clawings on the tree right next to the truck. What could go wrong? So I think we camped pretty close to a game trail. It's about the third mule deer in five minutes. I don't think they can hear us because of the water. And uh, the fire is blowing a little bit that way. You want a piece of this? Step up, fool. I think she might actually be coming over here. We got steaks, we got taters, peppers and onions. We're living right. If you're wondering, 11,200 feet is too high for a Georgia boy to be camping. I would sleep about four seconds and then wake up gasping for air all night. But the CBT Denali kept us dry from the rain, safe from bears. Slept three ogres, just fine. All the wind fell out of that tire last night. It was completely flat this morning. And I had to repressurize it. That's one of those beadlock things. They get really, really cold and the tire shrinks up. Sometimes the air will leak out of them. So this is the Henson site. If you're coming from Lake City, heading towards uh, engineer pass you'll pass through here lots of old mining structures they've even got a thing dam
All right, we're most of the way down the Mineral Creek Trail, heading towards Ure. We've got a waterfall and a waterfall. But we're still above 10,000 feet, so we need to get lower before we can set up camp because I need to sleep tonight. That whole waking up, gasping for air, I'm not about that. Got my production crew in there doing nothing but making fun of me. This is how you lose a ginger. About to go for two gingers on the trip for one. Yep, trying to get into tonight's camp spot. What was that trail called? Excursion trail, I guess. Excursion to this. A little bit further to our water source tonight. Maybe a little shoe stand. Ogre with electronics. Yeah, this is interesting. Usually, usually this species squats the pee. Well, we survived the night. Nobody staggered off the cliff in the middle of the night, so that's a success. I'll go ahead and put this out there for everybody. Do not eat chili before you sleep three dudes in a tent. Maybe you just don't sleep three dudes in a tent. Or don't do like me and at least announce to the world that you slept three dudes in a tent. Kyle, show us the correct method to use a French press. We oui, eat. Oui. It's very essential. You have to say, we oui, we. Oui. Oui, oui. That's what makes it a French press. What do we got here, Chef Matthew? So, we got it this morning. Took a little brisket. Put a little spinach in there. That's French. Six eggs. And we took some tortillas. Put them on there. Layered on there with some sharp cheddar. Then made little quesadillas. Obviously Chinese. We are multicultural overlanders. All right, it's 9.30. We just broke camp here on Mineral Creek. Awesome campsite. Don't bring your kids here. Good place to die. We're going to head down the trail to Yore, try to get some cell phone service and figure out if we want to do any more trails in this area or if we want to head towards Gunnison, Crested Butte or something. So we'll figure it out when we get some services. Point turn. How many point turn? I'm going with four. I think you do four. I think four. four. Five. Five, Five, maybe. Two. Three, four, it's gonna have to be a five. Do we count the ones where I have to back up and redrive there because you suck at spotting? I feel like if a driver listened to the spot of the first time, it would have been five. Well, you were doing the contradiction. I said straight and started right. You said right. straight and then you started right. And then you went left. Get up there and get us off this hill. Well, you got this. I can't see shit. Exactly. That's when you do your best work. seats now on the back floorboard. Excellent. I made you a mess. Is that, how, is that how gravity works? Yeah, gravity got us. Well, unfortunately, Imogene's not a through trail right now. The Telluride side is a little jacked up, so we can't go over, but we can go to the top, see the views. So we're gonna go do Yankee Boy first, come back out, and then hit Imogene. Then I think we're gonna head north north. 
you haul how do you you haul all right tell me tell me what comes to your mind when you hear this cataract titties cataract gulch i got the ginger air and down the uh top come on thing extremely windy up here and very brisk this whole waking up what are you looking at